today is the day I'm finally gonna beat Badlands. Wait, what? <laughs> you really thought you were gonna be beating Badlands today? Well, kinda, I mean it's- Shut up! I've updated Badlands and it now has three paths, a boss with 600,000 HP, and that Weasley little loadout of yours, it's not working out. <laughs> hey, guess who's made a strategy? <laughs> with this, no way. Actually, that's all you need. But the boss has 600,000 health, and everybody needs accelerators or engineers. Say no more. Let's begin with the video. Everything you saw is true. You can be level 25 with just soldier and minigunner and still beat Badlands. Oh, and also, you're not even gonna need farms. Though if you have slow internet which can mess up your farming, well guess what? That's no longer a problem. This strategy was made by Wistable and his friends, which took him a very long time. The credits are listed on the strategy document, but their hours of work have created the best Badlands 2 strategy ever. Let's load in now. First, we had two players place down soldiers in these corners. Then we had a player place a DJ right at the corner of this building. This bot is going to be able to see the soldiers, and it's pretty much the best spot on the map for the DJ. Here are all of the loadouts listed on screen, or you could go to the strategy in the description. Oh, and by the way, I didn't mention, but the soldiers do in fact get upgraded. We're able to skip the first wave because the enemies are so easy, and we're also able to skip the second wave, after which I get enough money, and I'm able to place down a militant. Now, the DJ user is saving up money for a level 3 DJ, the soldier users are saving up for level 2 soldiers, and and I'm just saving up money completely. We get another soldier placed down on wave 5, which is just in time for the quicks. And by the way, this soldier also gets upgraded to level 2. Wave 6 with our current defense was an absolute breeze, and wave 7, which can be a little troubling if you don't have right defenses, was actually no problem whatsoever. On wave 8, we get yet another soldier, because the enemies are starting to get tougher, and 3 soldiers is not going to be enough. But we're going to be keeping this soldier at level 1, because this player is going to need to save up money for Accelerator. Wave 9 comes out, and this wave is pretty tough. It rushes you with a ton of enemies and it's super easy to lose health. But thanks to now a minigunner, the best efforts of our enemies is still not enough to punch through our defenses. By the way, I'm still saving up money. And in a moment, I'll actually be spending it. But oh my god, it's time for a boss. Well, actually more like three. But four soldiers, a minigunner, and a militant is just too much for this boss to handle. Okay, maybe I lied a little bit, but just ignore the fact that it got as far as it did. DJ gets upgraded to level 3 at the end of wave 10, and now I can finally spend my money. I have to upgrade militant to level 3 now. Well, that little discount is actually going to save me a pretty important amount of money. Either way, I have to save up even more now because I can't afford the level 3 militant. But while that's going on, we upgrade our minigunner. I can't tell if that's level 1 or 2, but I'm guessing it's level 2 because we have shadows next wave. Oh, and by the way, the second time around, the boss was way easier. Just before wave 13 starts, we place down an accelerator right in this spot, which if placed well, should leave just enough room for a tower below it. I'm not going to be placing anything in there though, because I finally got enough money for my level 3 militant. And with an accelerator, level 2 mini, and level 3 militant, these shadows don't even get close. Time for wave 14. Two bosses. This should be hard, right? No, we have an accelerator. This defense is already starting to become pretty OP, considering the fact we haven't placed a single farm yet. And if that wasn't enough, we get yet another minigunner on wave 14. It should be placed exactly next to the first one and still leave enough space under it for a tower like the commander. Speaking of which, I have to place down the commander in that exact spot. After annihilating the shadows the second time around, I have enough money to get my commander up to level 2. And after that's done, we get an ace right next to the minigunner. Also should be placed in a spot where there's enough space for a commander under it. If you're watching this video to get an idea of the strategy, it is very important to know when to use commanders. And wave 16 is one of those waves. You want to use the commander about when the timer is at 44 seconds. And with that, you'll have just enough power to take down all of the breakers. You might take a little bit of HP, but that's alright. On wave 17, we get a level 3 minigunner, and then I have to place yet another militant right above the level 3 minigunner. But that mini is so strong, I don't even need to use commander on this wave and we'll still be destroying all the breakers. My militant becomes level 2 just before the end of the wave. And now it's time for wave 18, which has a lot of breakers. This may be a little bit tough, but if you use your commander ability at around 42 seconds, then you should do just enough damage like last time to kill most of the breakers off. Again, you might tank some HP, but that's honestly just a small amount out of the 200 you're given. Wave 19 is literally just some necromancers, which is completely free and easy, allowing me to get my level 3 militant, and also finally letting us place a minigunner in that one spot under the accelerator. On wave 20, I have to get another commander, 
now to the right of my militant, and of course upgrade it to level 2 for its ability. Now wave 21 is one of the hardest waves. It's very important to time your commander abilities well, so you should use your first one at around 55 seconds. I was mine a little bit early, but that just goes to show that you can be okay even if you make mistakes. And as for defense, we're gonna need a second accelerator and a level 3 minigunner. As soon as your first ability ends, you're gonna wanna immediately use your second commander ability, and like that, you should have just enough damage to kill off all of the breakers and maybe tank some HP if things don't go great. But once you're past this wave, it's honestly pretty easy up until wave 35. I get my third militant place down, and I upgrade it to level 2. I'm not gonna be upgrading this one to level 3. And now I have to save up money while I wait for a max level DJ. This goes on for a while, but once we get the max level DJ, I place down a new commander, and now I start working on a max level accelerator. By the way, once you have three commanders, just chain them as much as you can. I hopefully don't need to explain chaining, but that means use a commander's ability every time another one ends. And honestly, I should have gotten my accelerator a little bit earlier, because the enemies on this wave got very far. And now looking here, honestly, completely forgot to mention that one of our soldiers was replaced for a minigunner. And I forgot to mention that these minigunners were max level as well. On wave 27 we got our first max level accelerator, which was looking great because we were definitely going to need it for wave 30. And finally, after saving up for an incredibly long time, on wave 28, I was able to afford a max level accelerator. And now I was going to need even more money to upgrade this commander to max level. Thankfully I wasn't going to need to wait too long because the enemies were making me a ton of money. But once I got the max level commander, I was now going to have to reposition all of my commanders so I had to place three new ones right next to my max level one. All while that was going on, I had to keep using the commander abilities to make sure that we'd have enough damage to defeat the tanks. But with max level accelerators, these tanks got shredded way quicker than I expected. After getting my three new commanders set up, I was able to sell my two old ones, and now all I had to do was just chain them in that new area. On wave 31, I had sold all of my militants, they weren't really going to be useful anymore since accelerators are going to be the ones getting the job done, which is exactly what I placed down, an accelerator. By the way, speaking of chaining, since you have four commanders, you can use commander's abilities before the previous one runs out to make sure that 100% of the time your towers stay buffed. At this point, most of us were just maxing our accelerators, except for the level 25 player who was just placing down max level minigunners. It's important to have the max level minis be kind of down in that area, because the area towards the center of the map is intended for accelerators. Wave 33 was beaten with practically no problems, and so was wave 34. But as soon as wave 34 ended, we were now onto probably the hardest wave in this entire mode. The commander player must make sure that the ability stays up all of the time. We have three wardens who come out and immediately stun our accelerators. Right after they're done firing, the medic ability has to be used in order to unstun all of our accelerators. The wardens are gonna stun again, so it's important to sell and rebuy the medic so that the ability can be used and all the towers will be unstunned. But once you're past this wave, you can finally relax, because the rest of the mode is not going to be that difficult. Well, so long as commander player chains their commanders well. I get my final accelerator right there on wave 37, and now it's time for me to max all of my commanders just so they can see all of our towers. By the way, we've now started working on rangers. It's important to start placing rangers at this corner so that you don't place them right on top of the commanders and end up blocking the commander user from being able to chain them. And yes, forgot to mention there's more wardens on wave 38, but that's why we have a medic there. It's time for me to now start working on turrets, and now I'm just going to place them around all of our defenses. They have such a massive range, they'll be able to see the boss from pretty much anywhere. Now even though the rangers were placed kind of far back, they were still getting in the way of my commanders, so I had to turn my camera and chain from this angle. I got my final turret placed down right there on wave 39, and after maxing it out, I now have to place rangers. The thing is, it is wave 40, so I actually have to make sure I chain my commanders while still placing down my rangers. I get my rangers on this cliff over here, and again, I'm chaining my commanders in a way that 100% guarantees that the ability is up at all times. As for medic user, they're now just gonna have to sell and rebuy medic every time towers get stunned. By the way, I get my final max level ranger just as the gunslinger comes out. All of the accelerators immediately lock onto him, and he's gonna start spinning and shooting all the towers. <laughs> This is what selling and rebuying the medic is very good for. While the gunslinger is facing away from the towers, that's when the medic ability should be used. And just like that, we've already dealt 150,000 damage to him. All while this is happening, I'm still chaining my commanders. Gunslinger will drop down to half HP about halfway through the map. He might stun abuse quite a bit like you're seeing here. And honestly, after the guardians die and all of the turrets, minigunners, and rangers lock onto the boss, as well as the accelerators, well, his HP is gonna go flying down like it's nothing. So long as you keep chaining your 
your commander's well. Just like that, you'll take out Gunslinger with still some space left on the map, meaning that you, as a level 25, with no farms, could have earned Cowboy just as easy as this. Again, strategies in the description, like and subscribe if you win, and see ya!